people say it's not that bad. It's like me kicking you in your teeth, and I'm the one saying it's not that bad. You got kicked in the mouth. It doesn't matter whether you were around during slavery. It doesn't matter if your ancestors owned them or not. What matters is this. You benefit today from the enslavement of African people. And everyone who looks like you benefits in some way, shape, or form from the accrual of resources, of wealth, and of financial status that was reaped on the backs of my ancestors. A common narrative now is that black people shouldn't be upset because Africans enslaved other Africans, and there are a lot of holes in that theory. The thing is, there is no type of comparative slavery coming out of Africa. African people never had a slave-based economy. African people in Africa never had a shipbuilding economy based on slavery. They never had an insurance economy based on slavery. Slavery had a different cut to it in uh, Africa. European slavery is the slavery that is the unforgivable slavery. It's the most vicious. When blacks sold other blacks into slavery, they thought it was the kind of slavery that they had. Well, you had to maybe work in the field. Your family had to live over here on the side. You couldn't live here. Uh, your children had to go to school after my children. It was things like that. They had no idea it would be the kind of terror that was put upon us here in America, and they didn't come over here and go back and tell. And so they just were able to just keep shipping people through that system. During the European slave trade in Africa, there were some Africans who complied with the Europeans because basically when the Europeans went into Africa, they gave them an ultimatum. Look, we have these mm -hmm. advanced weapons. Either you're going to be our slaves or you're going to help us make them our slaves. So you make a choice. So a lot of people were forced to comply with the Europeans. Three things make American slavery different and black oppression different from everybody else's. Number one, it was a process of dehumanization. No other slave in world history was dehumanized, prevented from identifying as a human being. Nobody else. We are the only people in world history who have ever been dehumanized. Number two, your inability to learn was codified as a federal crime. Nowhere in history were slaves not allowed to learn, ever. You could be killed reading a book. You have never seen that in world history. And number mm -hmm. three, it's the only oppression where the whole world benefited. Everybody benefited from the enslavement of African people. Mm -hmm. And nobody did nothing about it. That makes your predicament different. So no matter how much we want to join ranks with the Latinos and the Asians and the Arabs, you have nothing in common with them. In fact, you need to be careful. Because just like with the Civil Rights Movement, they will use you again for your numerical strength and then abandon you at your time of need. They're always trying to find a comparative form of slavery coming out of Africa, and the slavery there, the servitude there, was much different than European servitude. There's a book by an, an African gentleman. This was the first time an African who was captured in Africa and brought over to the New World, this was the first time he got to tell his story from his own perspective. A guy named Oluda Aguiano had a book that was a bestseller in the 1700s, and he talked about the difference of being enslaved in Africa and being in servitude in Africa and Europe. He talked about when he was in servitude in Africa, the people, the Africans who had him in servitude, they treated him like an extended family member. They treated him with a, for a certain level of humanity and dignity. And he said once he got to the European slave ships, their slavery was something totally different. He'd never been beaten before. They were beaten on. People were getting raped on the ship. So he specifically stated how barbaric the European slavery was as compared to the African servitude. We have people today who deny that the history itself is even relevant to who we are as a nation of people and to what America represents in the world. There's no America without slavery. There is no economic dominance. There is no greatest American century without the capital produced by the work of black people in this nation. Point of fact. A lot of historians now will try to make it seem like slavery was just this stain on the fabric of America. But in reality, slavery was the fabric of America. Cotton was king. Slavery was the number one game in town. Let's not get it twisted. A kind of special kind of slavery enacted in America had never been enacted before. And that is to say that not only are you my slave, but your children will be 
be my slave, and your children's 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 will be my slave. In fact, you will never get out of slavery, regardless of how many generations of your and called family is born in this place. That was new and different. Many of the African leaders over in Africa, when they found out what was really happening to enslaved African people, when they found out that they were being taken from Africa and not being brought back, when they found out how inhumane many of the Africans were being treated, many of the African leaders fought the Europeans back, and that's a story that they never like to talk about. One person in particular was a queen, Madame Tenabu, who's a leader in the area we now know as Nigeria. When she found out what they were doing to the Africans, she fought vehemently against the British. So you get this really interesting interesting history, this really interesting narrative that the conservatives tell that basically says Rosa sat down, Martin stood up, he had a dream and we all overcame. And so therefore, since the signs of Jim Crow came down, obviously racism does not exist. Obviously, therefore, this is the land of equal opportunity. Obviously, therefore, when I'm looking at a 40% unemployment rate in the land of opportunity where racism does not exist, then this is because th these folks are fundamentally structurally flawed. I told a white woman this one time and she broke down crying. I said, are you benefiting off of what your great-grandparents did? She said, yes. I said, you know what they did to get that right? She said, yes. I said, are you ashamed of that? She said, yes. I said, but don't you still benefit off of it? She said, yes. Are you willing to give it back? No. <laughs> so what does that make you? You know, the damage has been done. 